running a GNG combat machine. This is the AIMTOP M4. It comes with a carry handle and a 300 round high capacity magazine. The battery is wired to the front which has its ups and downs but you can easily house a 9.6 volt nunchuck style battery. No. One of the best features of the AIMTOP is a steel convertible barrel. It can be shortened from standard length to CQB length. This is the flash hider. It's made of very solid metal and is not the standard M4 one, more of an HK416. Polymer parts include the stock, pistol grip, body, and forehand. The body is constructed of a high quality polymer and is less flexible than a combat machine's body. This allows for an extremely high cost value ratio. To gain access to your barrel and hop up unit, push out these two pins. Then your receivers should just slide apart. You now have access to your barrel, hop up, bucking, and nut. The barrel has pretty good crowning, but it's kind of strained. The hop-up unit is plastic, but it is of pretty good quality and you can use some pretty fine adjustments. One thing I thought was interesting on the aim top is that the bolt catch, which is non-functioning on this replica, is housed in place by some, some mysterious force. The stock tube can be described by one thing, solid. This is the most solid buffer tube I've ever held. The magazine catch is not of the real steel style, but is still very functional. Stock, it comes with a small Tamiya connector, but I would switch to a Dean's for advanced connectivity. It also comes stock with a tube type fuse. And with its silver core wiring, it definitely has the potential to be a rate of fire monster on the field. These connectors connect the fuse and the connector to the gun itself. They can pop out during play, so might as well tape those suckers up. The sling mounts are not ambidextrous and include the one on the stock and on the sight post. The hop up can be accessed and adjusted by just pulling back the charging handle. The forward assist does nothing on this model and it's just for aesthetics. Some annoying creaks and wobbles can be found, but those can be easily remedied with some tape. The barrel wobble though is quite disconcerting and I do not, I'm not sure how to work on that. Though other reviewers say the handguard wobbles, I found none of this. As for the internals, I'm not going to take apart this gun in this video for length reasons, but there will be a separate video on this channel in the near future showing those, but let's just go off of what we know is in the gearbox. We know there's a piston with steel strip teeth with the piston head that mounts in a non-standard way. So if you want to uh, change piston heads because you want an aluminum one or that one breaks, you kind of have to replace the whole piston, which is a bummer. Um, and there's a high chance that the piston head will crack because it, it uses a, an aluminum cylinder head and that additional strength will put more wear on your piston head. As for the gears, it uses a shelf shimming system invented by VFC. Now this is good because you'll never, you'll never have to shim, but it's, it's kind of bad because you'll never get it perfect. Now, if you're new to working on guns, you don't know how to shim, that'd be a great option. You just want to put in some new parts, fix, fix parts. That would be a great option because you don't have to shim it perfectly and have it work. And it, as for the uh, spring guide, it uses a CNC aluminum sp spring guide with ball bearings. That is probably not a replacement part, but who knows what is come to come in the future. It uses an anodized cylinder head, which is cool looking, let me tell you. And it uses silver core wiring, which I've talked about before, and that is great for uh, speed guns and for high efficiency. It also uses 8mm ball bearing bushings which would be great for rate of fire and would be a great choice if you really wanted to just be a hose out there. Now for my overall thoughts on the AIMTOP M4. I think this gun would make a great starter gun or an even better base for a custom build. The only problem is the battery housed in the handguard, which would disallow RAS systems and would cost a lot for a crane stock and a rewire. The gearbox, however, is very solid and I bet would last you a long time if you kept care and didn't like touch it for a while until it broke. That's probably the best part about the gun. The body is very solid and the stock is very solid and the battery is housed in the handguard very well but the internals really just make the gun, in my opinion. 
the convertible barrel and sight posts are very very solid and I think really add to the gun itself it does not include a battery but I would suggest a 9.6 volt nunchuck or a charger but you can pick up a smart charger which would prolong the life of your battery and overall just give you a funner time even if though there are some creaks and wobbles, an experienced airsofter or even a guy with some electrical tape can fix these no problem. Except for the barrel. You might need a little bit of help on that one. Overall, I think the aim top is a great decision for an airsofter and an, a healthy alternative to a combat machine or even an old JG. This might not be a game changer, but it's close.